let's take a look at this info dodo. Specifically, QEMU. They don't have a emu version of an emoji, so I go with the dodo, another flightless bird. So QEMU is something that supports both emulation and virtualization. And in this section, we're going to care about the virtual hardware that implements NVMe, Non-Volatile Memory Express, which is a specification for high-speed storage. You often see it used for things that are connected via the PCIe bus, Peripheral Component Interface Express, and basically you most likely have familiarity with this for high-speed SSD access, so solid-state uh, storage device. So QMU supports an emulated or virtual non-volatile memory express controller. So that's the thing that actually interfaces to the MVME devices, but it is a virtualization system and an emulation system, and it should always assume that everything coming from within a guest VM is ACID. So for context, we're going to think about it as if there's normally a user space, an operating system, and physical hardware that run. So the operating system runs on top of the physical hardware and the user space runs on top of the operating system. In contrast, in a virtualized operating system, you have the guest user space, the guest operating system, and then you have virtual hardware, which is to say software pretending to be hardware. In this case, it is QMU's software. And we are specifically going to focus on its implementation of an MVME controller. So that's virtual hardware, it's just software running in a process that pretends to be an MVME controller. But in the context of an attack, we know that virtualized attackers want to escape from the virtual machine. So let's assume that user space is already compromised and we know that there are attack surfaces between user space and the kernel because there's privileged separation between them. And as we said before, QEMU should treat everything inside of the guest operating system as attacker controlled input, so it should not trust that. There should be privilege separation between those. And then of course, QEMU itself should be privilege separated from other processes running on the host operating system. So user space is compromised, but for purposes of this section, we're going to assume that the full kernel is compromised as well inside the VM. And now we're dealing with a situation where the attacker has full privileges here and they can send arbitrary ACID to QMU's NVMe controller. With that, we have to look at the code and find the flaw. So go ahead and take a look at the ACID flow and you might find some info leaking.